Unit 3.3 Thermally Induced Stresses The course outcome for this unit has been to demonstrate the ability to calculate stress and deflection of axially loaded structures. For this lesson, the outcome is to solve for thermally imposed stresses and or deflections in axially loaded structures. Let's start by talking about a real-world example. This building has a glass curtain wall. That means the outside skin is made up of glass panels. And they're black in color. And during a storm one time, some of these glass panels fell out of the building. A study was done to find out why did the panels fall. This is a cross-section of the structure. I want to look right in here at this point to look at in detail the connection between the glass panel and the structure. Here it is, we see the glass panel is attached to the floor slab of the building. Let's look even closer. We see that the connection consists of a C-channel. This is a steel C-channel. It's called a C-channel because it's in the shape of a C. And the glass panels are connected with clips to the C-channel. Let's look at how the C-channel is connected to the building. The C-channel is connected with these pins that are spaced a couple feet apart along the length of the floor. Now, let's think about what happens when the sun shines on this building. The glass panels are black, and they will absorb heat. And the temperature of this C-channel will increase. And when the temperature increases, the steel C-channel will want to expand. But these pins, which are fastened through the channel to the concrete, will not be able to move. So they will restrict the expansion. This creates an internal force between the pins inside the C-channel, which means an increase in stress. At night, when the building cools down, the C-channels can contract. And this will result in a tension stress between, in the C-channel between the pins. And the next day, the next night, the next day, the next night uh, causes cycles of compression followed by tension, followed by compression in the member which worked on the pins. Eventually, those pins, which are just supported by rigid concrete, became loose, which allowed the C-channel to slip. And when the C-channel was loose, then the glass panels could fall out in a wind event. Let's think a little bit about the thermal effects on structures. Let's say we have this structure here. It's fixed to the wall on the left, free on the right, and it has original length of L0. There are no external forces applied to the structure. When we turn up the temperature, and the temperature of the member increases, what's going to happen? Well, it'll get longer. And the length change is a deflection. We'll call it a thermal deformation, or a thermal deflection will give it a symbol of delta T, where T stands for thermal. And we can calculate the value of the thermal deflection. It is equal to alpha times delta T times L0. Delta T is the change in temperature. L0 is the original length. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. Alpha is a material property. The units for alpha are per degree Fahrenheit, or per degree Celsius. When we multiply alpha times delta t uh, in US customary units, we have for alpha per degrees Fahrenheit, for delta t it's degrees Fahrenheit, they, they cancel each other out. We get a unitless number. And alpha delta t is a normal strain. If you multiply a strain by the original length, we get the deflection the change in length. Most tables of mechanical properties of materials will include values for alpha. You can see that the units for alpha are very small, 10 to the negative 6 per degree Fahrenheit. Now let's consider thermal effects on a statically indeterminate member. Here we have a member that is fixed at both A and B, and it has an original length, L0. If we increase the temperature of this member, it's going to want to expand. 
if we remove the wallet B, then the member can freely expand, and it would expand by the amount delta T, which we can calculate. But in reality, the wall will not let it expand. The wall will push back with a force of BX, and it will push with a force sufficient to create a deflection that we will call delta F. And what can we say about delta F and delta T? Well, that is a compatibility equation. We can say delta T is equal to delta F. If we apply our equations for delta T and delta F, we get this expression here. Alpha delta T times L naught is the equation for thermal deflection. PL over AE is the equation for a deflection due to an internal force. We can replace the value for P with this internal force BX. L is the original length L naught. Now we only have one unknown in this problem. It would be BX, and we could solve for it directly. And we're done.